Hello, I'm Steve Bryant. I'm a volunteer here at California Botanical Garden. I'd like to talk to you today about butterflies, especially the native butterflies we have here in the garden. So butterflies are called holometabolous insects. That means they have a complete metamorphosis during their life cycle. And they have four life stages. There's the egg, then the larva, usually called a caterpillar in butterflies, the pupa, which in butterflies is also called a chrysalis, and then the adult. The egg is laid and usually stuck to a plant that the female butterfly decides is suitable for the larva to eat. After a few days, the larva hatches, and usually the first thing it does is eat its eggshell. And then it starts eating the plant. And as it grows, using the food of the plant, although there are a very few carnivorous ones, then the skin that the larva has becomes too tight. Unlike our skin, it doesn't grow with the size of the caterpillar. And so every now and then, the caterpillar reaches the end of the stretchiness of its skin and goes off feed for a day or so. And then the, it forms a new skin under the old skin. Then it, the old skin cracks off. The new skin becomes the skin of the larva for now. And then it repeats that. In monarchs, for instance, there are five such larval stages called instars. During the last of these stages, sometimes the last two, depending on the butterfly, adult structures will start to develop in the larva. And then it's in the last stage, the larva will actually form the chrysalis shell underneath its skin. And again, it wiggles out of the skin and becomes a chrysalis, usually attached to something. And during the chrysalis stage, the pupil stage, then adult structures form from cells which are set aside way early in the egg stage. And things like wings and antenna form from these cells. After a while, then the adult emerges. When it emerges, its wings are very shrunken little tiny blobs. And it uses fluid in the body to pump through the veins in the wings and expanding the wings to full size. Then the wings have to harden a while and then the adult can fly away to mate, lay eggs, or if it's a male, just, just mate. Okay. So those are the four stages of a butterfly. Well, butterflies don't grow as adults. So all the growing is done as a caterpillar. And so when you, one sees different sizes of adult butterflies of the same species, that's due to how much food the caterpillar ingested. So caterpillars can be big, or if they run out of food plants, they will be small. They're too small, of course, they can't complete their life cycle. But there's a wide range of caterpillar sizes which can go ahead and successfully form a chrysalis and then an adult. So sometimes you'll find butterflies in maybe two or three times bigger than other butterflies of the same species. And that's due to the growth as a caterpillar. Butterflies are important in two basic ways. Butterflies are good pollinators of some species. And they also are a great part of the food chain. So they provide food at their various life cycles for other insects, for reptiles, for amphibians, and for all sorts of vertebrates. So probably those are the two main ecological importances of butterflies. Of course, they also have the aesthetic importance of being beautiful to see flying around. A host plant for an insect is the plant upon which it actually feeds. So in the case of butterflies, it would be the plants that the larvae feed on. And plants are unusual compared to animals in that they can't run, they can't fly, they can't burrow, they basically can't hide. So whereas an animal can do all those things, at least various animals can, to escape things that are trying to eat it, a plant is, as one might say, rooted to the ground and cannot escape. So plants have developed a remarkable variety of chemical defenses. So all animals pretty much taste the same. They taste like meat. But plants 
have a variety of different tastes. In fact, if you look at the spice rack, you'll find that virtually all of your spices come from different plants. And those different spices basically taste different because they are chemical defenses against things that are trying to eat the plants. So a host plant, if you try and eat plants, you'll find that there's a lot of them that are poisonous to you. And the same thing with butterflies. They have to be pretty careful about what plants they lay their eggs on such that when the larva starts to eat the leaf, it doesn't get poisoned. And in fact, some butterflies have evolved to take poisonous plants, that is plants poisonous to vertebrates, and sequester those poisons inside their bodies. So they don't poison the caterpillars, but they will poison anything that tries to eat it. So monarchs are widely known for feeding on milkweeds, which are generally poisonous to vertebrates. And that makes the caterpillars and the adults poisonous to vertebrates also. Another example is the pipe vine swallowtail. It feeds on pipe vine, which is a species of plant that is very poisonous. In fact, it is carcinogenic, it causes cancer. It is mutagenic, it causes mutations. And it is nephrotoxic, which means it's bad for your kidneys. So the caterpillars of the pipe vine swallowtail sequester those poisons and make the caterpillars and the butterflies very poisonous to vertebrates. But a host plant is the plant that the larvae can feed on successfully. And they are the important plants to a butterfly, more so than nectar plants, especially in Southern California. Nectar plants are simply plants that provide nectar to the adult butterflies. Not all adult butterflies feed, but most in Southern California do. And in Southern California, we don't really have to worry too much about nectar plants because the wonderful people of Southern California have planted flowers all over the place. And most of those are available to butterflies for nectar. So it's, it's not nectar plants so much in Southern California that we have to worry about, but planting the specific host plants that the butterflies need. For instance, oak trees are a host plant for several species of butterflies, including the California sister, milkweeds for monarchs. Um, there's a couple of butterflies that feed on lupins. There's the Sarah orange tip that feeds on various mustards and so forth and so on. The best thing to help butterfly populations is to plant their host plants. As I mentioned earlier, nectar plants aren't usually a problem in Southern California, but the host plants, many of the native host plants have been lost to development. So the best thing to do is plant host plants. There's lots of information online about that. One thing to be a little bit careful of is to not plant huge quantities of a host plant. Because when you do that, you run into the monoculture problem that agriculture has. Namely, if you plant a huge quantity of one host plant, you'll get a huge quantity of butterflies and their larvae. But you will also get the pests that feed on the butterflies and larvae. So there are a variety of insects, vertebrates, including uh, the various kinds of flies and wasps that are kind of specialized predators on butterflies, their larvae, and their pupae. So the ideal thing is to plant small patches of these host plants separated by a considerable distance. So if you can plant some of the host plants and have your neighbor a block away plant some more, and that neighbor another block away, plant some more, then that's better than having a continuous strip of host plants. I think my favorite butterfly species in California is the pipe vine swallowtail. The pipe vine swallowtail is a beautiful blue-black butterfly with orange spots on the outside of the hind wings. And the blue on the hind wings is iridescent. So it catches the sunlight just like the throat of a hummingbird. So when it flies in and out of the shaded canyons where its host plant grows, you'll see these flickers of brilliant blue reflecting off the hind wings. The butterfly feeds, the caterpillars of course, feed on California pipe vine, Aristolochia, also called Dutchman's pipe, a very poisonous plant. This is what it looks like when it's growing. It has rather heart-shaped leaves. And in its habitat in Northern California, in the Bay Area and along the uh, west side of the Sac or east side of the Sacramento Valley, the vine grows massively and can smother trees. So it's a very reasonably common plant. 
and can grow quite large. The stems can grow maybe up to 50 to 100 feet. Okay, so it can really do a job on trees. But the most interesting thing I think about this plant and the butterfly is the caterpillar of the butterfly. It looks like something out of a horror movie. It's not very big, but if you imagine it as human size, you would run screaming away from it. It is black with tentacles all over it. And at the base of each tentacle, depending on the color phase, is a red dot. So it looks like this creature from the Black Lagoon. And if you hold it up close to you, those larvae are pretty scary. But again, they sequester the poisonous properties of the California pipe vine and become poisonous themselves to vertebrate predators. Yes, I would just like to make a pitch for again growing native host plants for native butterflies and growing them in patches spaced well apart. <laughs>